What's going on guys and welcome back to the crack of pack series today We are opening up a pack of shadow more. This is not one that we get to open very often So I'm very excited to actually open this one uh, I have to say I don't actually have much experience with shadow more really this entire block uh, I did open packs during that time, but I didn't actually play very much So I'm gonna do the best that I can to figure out what our pack one pick one would actually be but of course uh, We will go through every card just to make sure that we don't miss anything and as always, you guys are welcome to disagree uh, in the comment section below. That's perfectly fine. So, uh, we start off with Scuzzback Marauders. It's a 5-2 for 4 and then a hybrid mana, either red or green. It does have Trample and it also has Persist. Now, Persist is a really cool mechanic. When this creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had no negative 1, negative 1 counters on it, return it to play under its owner's control with a negative one, negative one counter on it. So basically it gives it a second shot at dealing some damage, affecting the board, all the cool stuff. Uh, Persist is a very, very good mechanic. It just adds a lot of extra value to basically every creature that has it. Uh, and I really, really like that. Um, that being said, uh, a card like this is probably okay, but it's gonna die very, very easily. So the problem being that it's a 5-2, uh, which means it's really likely to just kind of trade off in combat with something a lot lower powered than it. Uh, and that's a big problem. Now, it does have trample, so it's going to be able to deal some damage, ideally, if you're the one attacking. If you're in green, red, or that kind of combination of colors, most likely you will be attacking, so that does make some sense. Uh, and then persist, obviously, gives it that extra value of being able to bring it back and not making it a total waste, so to speak. Uh, so I'm okay with this card, but it doesn't seem amazing. Uh, it does seem like it's going to deal some damage fairly easily, but uh, in general, not super, super exciting. Uh, power of fire is one and a red for an enchant creature. Uh, the creature has tap and this creature deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, now again, as always, I am not a huge fan of enchant creatures like this, uh, solely because they open yourself up for the two for one that I always talk about. Uh, the problem is if you enchant a creature and then the creature dies, you lose both cards. So it's like you're kind of you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Uh, that being said, a card like this where it adds like a pinging effect is pretty useful. Uh, I do really like pingers just in general in limited, so I'm okay with that. Still don't think this is high on the list for picks for me. Uh, just not a huge fan of cards like that. A disturbing plot is one and a black for a sorcery return target creature in a graveyard to its owner's hand. Now this also features conspire, so as you play this spell you may tap two untapped creatures you control that share a color with it. Uh, when you do copy it, and you may choose new target, a new target, excuse me, for the copy. Uh, this is a good effect, uh, even as just not even conspiring this out. I feel like this is actually okay. Uh, two mana to bring a creature back to your hand, pretty good. Uh, we see abilities like this kind of all over. Uh, we see them on sticks sometimes, like Gravedigger uh, is kind of the classic example. And they are really, really good cards just because... Uh, you can pick whatever creature is going to be best for the situation you're in. If they've dealt with a big bomb, you can bring it back. Uh, and so I do really like that. The ability to conspire is also quite good. Uh, just being able to get that extra value in the situation where it calls for it is fantastic. So I do like this card quite a lot. Not necessarily as a first pick, but definitely a strong card. Uh, Parapet Watchers is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a blue, and then you can pay hybrid of either white or blue, and it gets plus 0, plus 1 until the end of the turn, so it gets uh, a bigger butt, so to speak. Uh, don't really like this card, uh, it just seems kind of useless. Um, the reason being, yes, it might be able to block and like hold off an attack, but with 2 power only, it's not really going to deal with very much. So it's kind of just a stall card, and you have to invest mana just to be able to do that. It's also underpowered for a 3-drop at 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it seems quite bad to me. Uh, so for me, not a huge fan. Uh, Watchwing Scarecrow is a 2-4 for 4 of any color. Uh, and it has Vigilance as long as you control a white creature. And it also has Flying as long as you control a blue creature. So the Scarecrow deck... Uh, is really really interesting. Uh, I will say scarecrows are pretty cool I do like the like if you have this color you get this thing kind of ability. I like that uh, And they're flexible obviously so they can technically be put into any deck Obviously, they just get power buffs uh, if they're in certain certain colors and so I Kind of like this card, but for four mana I don't like that. It's just a two four now if you're in a blue deck I feel like it's worth it because you get flying uh, flying is really really key vigilance also pretty good, but uh, I think the flying is really where I would prefer this to be uh, Obviously if you're in blue and white, that's great 
Uh, and so this is kind of a prime card for you. Uh, but in general, I'd probably rather have a little bit more definition on the colors that I want before picking a card like this, which really requires it uh, to be in at least blue, but also probably white, uh, just to make it really, really good. Uh, Ballynock Cohort is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a white. It does have first strike and also gets plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, excuse me, as long as you control another white creature. Now, this is a really good card, uh, actually, I think. Uh, it's a pretty solid 3-drop at the very least. So, 2-2 uh, two, two first striker for 3, pretty good. It's going to be able to deal with other, like, 2 and 3-drop cards pretty easily. Uh, now, being able to give it a plus 1, plus 1 uh, for as long as you control another white creature is great. Uh, obviously, if you're in a white deck, you're probably going to have another white creature, so I don't think it's too far-fetched to actually make that happen. Uh, and so for that for that uh, value, you're getting basically a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three first striker, which is way above average uh, um, in my mind in terms of a 3-drop. So I really like this card, definitely one that I would play. Uh, Prism Wake Marrow uh, is a 2-1 two, for 2 and a blue. It does have flash, so you can play it at instant speed. Um, when it comes into play, target permanent becomes the color or colors of your choice until the end of the turn. Uh, we've already seen with the Scarecrows, you can kind of play around with colors and make it a little bit more worth it. That being said, I don't really like cards like this. Uh, it just doesn't seem to have the biggest payoff when you're actually playing limited. Uh, changing the color of something while definitely has some niche circumstances where it can be quite good. Uh, in general, it's just kind of, okay, you change the color, now what? It's not very important. So not really a huge fan. I do, I will say, I do like that this has flash uh, just because it can be a surprise blocker. Uh, so it may even have some utility just in that fact. Uh, but in general, I like the uh, cohort that we have a little bit better. Uh, Inescapable Brute is a 3-3 for 5 and a red. It does have Wither, so it deals its damage to creatures in the form of negative 1, negative 1 counters. So, uh, it doesn't deal damage like a normal creature. Instead, for every damage that it would deal to a creature, that creature gets minus 1, minus 1 counters. Uh, so, that damage can basically add up over multiple turns, which is really, really good. Uh, but it must be blocked uh, if able. So, uh Interesting card. I don't really like it, uh, if I'm going to be honest. It's a little bit high mana costed for a red deck, which is obviously where something like this would probably be at its best. 3-3 uh, three, three with Wither is pretty good, and making it so it must be blocked mean it's, means it's going to be able to deal with some creatures, which is great, but uh, it's for 6 mana, and that's a lot of mana. Uh, I feel like there are just way more important things to be doing with 6 mana than playing this, and for that reason, not a huge fan. Uh, Safe Right Quest. Uh, this is hybrid mana of either green or white for a sorcery. You search your library for a forest or a plains card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Pretty straightforward card, but definitely one that's kind of okay. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it does kind of smooth out your lands, which is important, uh, especially if you're in a multicolor deck or something like that. Uh, so I do kind of like it in that style deck, uh, but in general, not an early pick for sure. It's one of those cards where like, if you know you need land fixing of some kind, maybe this is the way to go. Uh, but other than that, not really that high of a priority. Uh, Splitting Headache is a sorcery for three and a black. You get to choose one. So target player discards two cards or target player reveals his or her hand. You choose a card from it, then that player discards that card. Uh, so this is a very, very uh, I would say lucrative hand destruction, hand destruction spell, excuse me, uh, but it is for four mana, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, hand destruction is like okay in low power level uh, limited environments, like Mind Rot is pretty okay in most core sets, uh, but at four mana, uh, that's a little high for hand destruction. So by the time you play this, they may only have one card left. Um, so I, I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Uh, I will say if you can get in the right spot in certain niche kind of scenarios, it's probably really good because you can strip away the opponent's hand to make sure that they have just no plays, which is good. You can put them in that top deck mode, but uh, in general, you're probably not going to get the best value out of a card like this in limited, so not a fan. Uh, Barenton Medic, I hope I'm saying that correctly, it's a 0-4 for 4 and a white. You can tap it and prevent, prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn, and then you can put a negative one, negative one counter on it and untap it. So basically this is just a save damage card. I really don't like save damage cards like this. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into a card like this to make it good. Uh, yes, it can prevent some damage, which is good, and it does block pretty well, but uh, in general, really not a fan of this, so I will definitely not be picking that. 
Uh, Tatterkite is another Scarecrow, so it's a 2-1 for 3, and it does have flying, and it can't have counters placed on it, which is actually pretty key in a, in a format like this. So the reason I say that Wither is obviously a mechanic that we see a lot of in this set, uh, and so being able to deal with Wither creatures uh, is really, really key. Uh, because they just can't really touch this if it can't have negative one counters placed on it Then it just can't take damage from those. So that's actually pretty good. I do like that. It's also uh, Generic mana, so it's going to be thrown into pretty much any deck and it's just always going to be a decent three drop uh, I think to keep ourselves open. This might be a better pick than the cohort uh, And so for now, I'm going to keep that here uh, Drove of elves is uh, three and a green for a star star creature uh, it's uh, power and toughness are equal to the number of green permanents you control uh, It also can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control So essentially this gives hexproof or it does have hexproof uh, Worth noting uh, for anybody that might not know this. Uh, I feel like it's common knowledge, but I just want to clarify uh, Forests do not count as green permanents. They are colorless. That is how lands work. So uh, this only counts enchantments creatures things like that so uh, for that reason, it's not as powerful as maybe some people might think, but uh, it is actually pretty good. Uh, just giving Hexproof in general is really, really good and limited because it means they have to deal with it on board, and if you can power it up enough, they literally can't do much about it. So I really like this. Uh, I don't know if I like it more than the Tatterkite, to be honest, uh, just because it is a little bit more pigeonhole -y. We kind of just want green permanence for a deck like this, uh, but it's definitely worth considering, so I'm going to keep it to the side for now. Uh, Mad Blind Mountain. It comes into play tapped, uh, and you can pay a red and tap it, shuffle your library, play this ability only if you control two or more red permanents. So it basically just literally gives you a shuffle effect. Uh, not a fan of this. It just seems like a really bad mountain uh, at that point. There might be instances where it's probably worth it. Uh, I don't know exactly what they would be offhand, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, so definitely not interested. Uh, and then our rare is Thought Reflection, so it's an enchantment for four and three blue. Uh, if you would draw a card, you draw two cards instead. So this is a really powerful card, but uh, it is very late game, and that is, generally speaking, not the best thing for limited. Uh, by that point, you're hoping to either win the game or have your opponent kind of locked out of the game. Uh, and so it just doesn't seem like it does enough. Um, I, do, I will say drawing two cards every time you would draw one hugely hugely gives you an advantage if you can get this off early uh it means that you will be ahead just in terms of card advantage which means you're way more likely to actually win the game which is fantastic but uh this to me seems more like a commander card uh and less like a limited card so i don't think i'll be picking that uh, I do think it's between the Drove of Elves and the Tatterkite. I think the Drove of Elves definitely has a higher upside, uh, but the Tatterkite kind of leaves you open a little bit more. Uh, and for that reason, I could honestly see uh, you picking either one. It kind of depends on how you want to draft. Uh, for me, because I like to stay open, I think I would pick the Tatterkite. That being said, though, if you are a green player or you just want big swingy stuff, Drove of Elves is very, very good and probably a little bit higher uh, just in terms of general power level because it does have that hexproof. So uh, I do like that card, but I think I would pick Tatterkite just to remain open. Pretty cool pack, though. I always love opening Shadowmore and things from that Lorwyn block just because the art's really fantastic. The lore is really great. So really super excited to be opening that. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, and if you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe and turn that little bell on. That way you can get all the notifications for when we post videos, which is five times a week. Just saying. Uh, so with that, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack episode.